Hello guys, how's it going? So today we have a big one, a plugin review of Red9. And this is a big one mainly because if you are into mocap, if you're a professional animator right now, or if you are looking to actually uh, clean up mocap, Red9 is 100% your best friend. This video is not sponsored in any ways, but I have been using Red9 for many, many years. And uh, they now have a monthly plan, so you too can actually access the professional tools. And I think that this is a must have if you're definitely serious about getting into mocap because it makes your life so much easier and the more you use them, the better they get. So without further ado, let's get to it. Let's check them out. Welcome to another video. My name is Harvey Newman. I've been in the games industry for over 20 years now, and I have been mainly an animator, animation director, working many AAA titles over the years. And what I've learned is that not only can you actually do handkey in this industry, but you can also do mocap and both things are equally as important. And even though in the beginning mocap for me was very much like soul crushing because I wanted to handkey everything, mocap serves a purpose in the games industry and it saves you a lot of time, right? So if you actually want to do a bunch of animations and have a bunch of animation sets, then you can just go into the mocap studio go and capture that stuff, bring it back, and within like half of the time or even less, you can get that data back into the game and looking nice, looking great. Now, this depends on the type of game that you're making. If you're making a realistic game, mocap is a natural answer. If you're making a stylistic game, then handkey or heavily modified mocap is your answer. Either way, uh, Red9 is here to save you guys because at least that's how I feel because uh, it's the easiest tools for you to kind of like manipulate mocap and bring in mocap into Maya and basically um, have a bunch of tools that make makes cleanup mocap so much easier. Before we jump into Maya, I need to show you guys here the website that uh, Red9 has. Red9 um, is, they are really good friends of mine. We've been working together for many years. And I actually used to work with the people behind the scenes that actually created Red9 way back in the day in a company called Eurocom. Amazing people, incredibly supportive, and they definitely know what they are doing. They released this website a few months back. And the best thing about this website is that now this pro pack here that you can see on top, uh, you can actually get it now with a 30 day trial, so you can try it out, right? Everything that I'm gonna show you next, you can try it out and see how you feel about it. If you actually are into it and you find it super useful for your workflow, for what you do, then you can go ahead and just get it, get it monthly, right? And this is brand new, it didn't exist before, before it was very much that you had to contact them to find out a best price for you. And it was mostly catered to big studios, right? Studios that actually wanted to actually have this pipeline, this tooling within their team. But now this is for the indie dev, for the individual animator, for the person that is actually working by themselves, cleaning mocap, no matter what you do. So this is a great, great deal. I think $40 or 40 pounds in this case per month, um, I think is really, really nice. And it's comparable to other tools out there, uh, given what you get with this tool, right? Now we can actually go ahead and purchase a year or three years, but I think that for sure, if you're not sure about this and if you're on the fence give at least the 30-day free trial and if you're not happy obviously you can cancel it once again this video is not sponsored in any ways i'm just a big fan of the tools and i feel like all of you out there that want to get into mocap should check this out so you might have seen this guy here right this guy is the red nine puppet um and this is the puppet that i use in many many of my videos since the very beginning when i started in youtube very sturdy rig. I'm not going to review it on this video. This is about the tools, but let me know in the comments down below if you want me to review it right in the future. Now, Red9 is a little bit everywhere, the Red9 tooling, right? And the more you explore, the more you start to see how Red9 is everywhere. So you have here on the left, like icons that show up that weren't that weren't there before. And when you open it, you can see how you can update the, the tools over the cloud. And you can see here that you can either revert your tooling for a last pack or have the latest pack installed at all times, right? Uh, you also get a pop-up to say that there's a new version uh, in case you actually missed that. But this is kind of how you actually go about going up and down versions of the tool. Other places that you can see Red9 is if you go to file, all of a sudden you have here more options that you had before, such as copy animation through clipboard, open explorer, save direct, import direct. And this is to do with when you have Perforce um, connected to Red9, which you can. 
you can then start using these shortcuts. This is more catered, I think, to bigger studios where you have a team working with this tool. Um, I have used it before, it's really, really cool. Another place that you can find Red9 is also here in the timeline. So here in the timeline, if you actually go ahead and hover this bit here, you have the time code. This basically changes from just showcasing uh, frames to then now showcasing the time that you have, right? So one second and 25 milliseconds, two seconds, three seconds, and you're just gonna go like this. And this is perfect if you are working in film or if you are working the cinematics in game, because now you can basically match your animation to maybe the code that they capture in the volume in, in the mocap studio, right? So really, really useful. Now you can also have a range. Select from range, this is basically when you have a mocap clip and it's really, really long, you can just basically select the animation from the range that you have selected. So this thing here, and then basically that changes. And then you can basically go ahead and untoggle the time code and get the frames back if you want to. So Red9 is a bit everywhere, but the most important bit or the most important tools that you can find in Red9 are gonna be in ProPack. Now this thing here, you probably have seen it from before because I have used animation toolkit and I have used specifically track, track and stabilize because that's the thing that I use the most. But what you get with the red nine is this pro pack section here, right? Now I'm going to go ahead and get this window to be out like this. You can see here that you get a bunch of different tools. Now the red nine browser is actually very powerful. Uh, when you connect it to something like Perforce. So by having this connected to Perforce means that you can start going through your assets to animation assets. When you have hundreds or thousands of animation assets, you can search for your assets. You can basically check out and check in your assets from your browser, which makes it super, super, super useful. But this is mostly when you have a team of people working with Perforce. Now I'm going to go ahead and go into the rest because these are basically for everybody to use, not just teams. And I think they're gonna be a bit more useful to you as an individual animator. Now character picker, super useful. Everybody knows what a character picker is. In this case, this one is very flexible. You can select fingers. You can select the different controllers of the, the animation if you want to. You can change IK or FK on the fly, just like that. And I'm gonna show my controllers so you can see what I mean. So right now is FK and now is at IK right there, right? So you can just kind of like go ahead and change those things just by clicking buttons. And you can see that they are actually quite fast. So this goes from IK to FK, just that easy. Another thing to note as well here is that when it changes from IK to FK, it stays in the same place. So this is super useful because a lot of rigs, as most of you know, when you have IK over here and then the IFK is here by default, when you change from one to the other, you actually get going to get like a snap back into this place, which you then have to animate back into the place that the IK was or snap it back to the place that the IK was. This way, if you are here in IK, right, and you press the button, now you are here in FK as well. So you can see here now this is straight up FK as it is. So allows you to kind of like more freedom to go between between states. You can select things by like, you know, area selecting just like this, uh, which is really easy. It's awesome for hands uh, and, and whatnot. Uh, so super cool character picker. And the best thing about it is that if you're going to edit edit mode on, all of these things can change. You can move these things, you can create new controllers. Really, really cool. So that's the character picker. Um, so FK IK matcher. So this is basically doing the same thing as the character picker where you kind of match the IK and FK through ranges this time. So you can actually go like, I want to like change the from, from IK to uh, FK within 20 frames, right? For the 20 frames that I want. So from zero to 20 is going to be FK. And then, and then from 20 to the rest of the range is going to be IK. And then you just click these buttons, FK to IK, switch to IK or IK to FK, switch to FK. And that is as easy as that. So it depends on the animator. I'm very much a guy that likes to do it on the character picker, but if you like to have a little window open that you can just click buttons as you go about, all good, Red9 has you covered. Now, another thing that I should actually mention as well before we go through more tools here is that Red9 is also on your right clicks. So if you right click on top of any controller, you can see here that like you have you know, contextual menus right here that allow you to do different things, such as select the whole 
all the controllers. You can have IFK, FK IK switch on that specific controller. So if, if you are here and you want to switch from IK to FK, you can go ahead and just do that. And you have a IK switch just like that, right? You can do many more things such as parent space, wrist locks. A lot of this stuff is basically here on this menu, right? But you have it available in basically super fast mode as you are working on your animations. Now I'm going to go through here because I think this is simpler, but just know that most of this stuff that you have here will be available to you when you right click and more. Actually, you have more things available here than you will have available over here. But let's just keep it simple because there's so much to go through. Now we also have space matching. This is a godsend because when you are cleaning up mocap, one of the things that you have to deal with is that if your character is in this space where the hips are in a specific space and your uh, wrists and your feet are in a different space, if you have to move the character from being here to being like, let's say a meter uh, in front of, it, of this, you have to do this and then you have to select all the con other controllers and then you have to move things forward and hope that it matches and is a bit of a pain. Now, with this, it means that at any point in your animation, you can go ahead and just select the controllers that you want to change in terms of um, spacing. So I basically selected all these controllers and I basically want to say that my hips is my parent to these controllers, right? So follow the hips, basically, in other words. So I can just go ahead and do that. And just like that, you saw how quick he was. Now, when I move the hips, it moves the whole character around, which makes it super easy to change, especially as you kind of like, sometimes you have mocap that starts from here, right? Or, slight, or slightly offset from the side. And then the mocap, just the clip starts going. So this is great for you to just go like, actually the whole animation, just change it and just basically zero it out. And then you can just go here and put it at zero and then the animation starts in the correct place. And then once you have that done, you can revert things and basically go like, actually, I want now the wrists and the feet to be back in its original place. Really, really useful. Now, what else do we have? Wrist lock manager, really amazing tool when you have weapons, when you have pistols, machine guns, anything that you want to switch from hand to hand. This is basically where you do it. You basically grab one object, set it to a space and you key it. This is how you key it right here. And then you animate it for a period of time. And then basically you set it to another space and then you key it. And then you have now the weapon going from being like this to now being like this to then being like this again, right? Super, super useful for you to actually animate objects moving around in space without having to use the parent, uh, parent everything and just basically have uh, absolutes. This allows you to not have that, which is really cool. Now, attribute manager, this I don't use very much, but it's to do with the channel box. Um, you can actually kind of like go ahead and just make sure that you display certain things or you hide certain things. Uh, useful if you're into that. Um, uh, normally, I leave that to the technical animator. Control builder, this is for riggers. If you actually are into rigging, this is super useful. You have already controllers there for you to use as you wish, as you rig up your character, right? Export manager, now this is a big one. Export manager is what you would use to actually export animations, right? So I'm going to go ahead and just go into this in a little bit because we're going to add some animation to this, but you will use this to export your animations into game and it makes your export to game so much easier. And then we have uh, export settings. This is basically generic settings for your exporting. You normally don't touch that very much. Uh, you also have play blast settings. Now this you can tweak quite a bit. You can go ahead and actually kind of like set a custom play blast if you want to. You can set the format, which is normally something complicated to change, and the compression that you want to use, the quality, and also the render size, which is really cool. You can even set a specific camera to actually do your play blast all the time, which is really, really nice. And there's a bunch of other options that you want. So it allows you to customize your play blasts as you go ahead. This is useful here specifically because there's a bunch of different tools here in Red9 that allow you to not only, for example, export, but also play blast at the same time. So you don't have to click a bunch of times. Now, let me see. Uh, let me just go ahead and um, you have animation redirect. 
Now this one, I have to basically do a video by itself because it allows you to, like if you have a walk cycle, it allows you to kind of like tweak your walk cycle to have swings and twists and all of that stuff. R9 Anim, it requires another video by itself. Leave a comment down below if you want me to talk about it. But it's basically their own animation file that you can save and then basically load a bunch of extra stuff that you wouldn't have with a regular save, right? Really, really cool. Track to locator, basically whenever you have an object and it's moving in space, you just want to track a wrist to a specific space. You can just go ahead, track to locator, it creates a locator and it tracks that object to that locator to give you that information. Definitely check out my video on how to animate with locators. I'll leave a link down below because animating with locators is like your best friend in animation, especially when you clip cleaning mocap. So 100% useful. Animation curve editor. This is a Butterworth filter for those that know, they know very useful. We're going to go into it in a little bit, but I need to actually take take you guys through pro to bind because this is arguably the biggest thing that you're going to be doing in red nine as you work on this tool now when you work with mocap what happens is that you need to bring the mocap data into your character in some way or the other this is always a mystery to people people go but how do i start with mocap because i don't know how to get it into maya and all these other things and the regular route or the most popular route is for you to use a program like motion builder um, which is also from autodesk and then use motion builder because they have nice tools for you to kind of like grab the fbx data from that comes with the motion capture and then load it into your character maybe clean it up a little bit in motion builder export that and then open it into maya and then open and then clean it up as you can tell lots of steps to actually just get the file into maya and get animating right so red nine actually kind of like streamlines this whole thing by giving you this pro to bind where you can basically load the FBX file. So in this case, a walk to idle. I'm just gonna go ahead and open it. Now it's here. And then I actually point it to my binder, which you, you get normally in in, um, in Red9, which is basically in this case is my BND binder. And you go ahead and transfer. So this is doing a bunch of stuff behind the scenes now where it's loading the data, putting it into a binder, then get it, giving it to you in your regular rig so you can start animating it. And just like that, now you have a character uh, animating and displacing in time. So it's not the best animation, but you can see here the character is just animating and doing its thing. Super easy. So now you have mocap in a character and the character is moving, which is really, really, really cool, right? Now, um, now that we have that data, I'm going to go ahead and basically open this uh, curve filter and the Butterworth filter so you can see what it does to your mocap data. So one of the things that I would do after I have this, now that I have that animation, good times, I don't need the Pro to bind anymore. So now let's say I have to clean up this data, right? So you can see here, for example, that I have my character, my character is not in the middle, right? And perhaps I wanna start from zero to then move the character on the side, right? So in order for me to do that, as I mentioned before, I go ahead and just select, just select the feet, select the wrists, and then go here, right click, and you can see here that the parent space that I showed before is here as well. So it opens this, right? So now I go actually switch space to your hips. So he's doing his thing, has done it, cool, close. And now I'm gonna go ahead and add a layer on top of this, right? And then set one key in the beginning uh, on your hips. Yeah, set one key in the beginning of the hips. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I basically just move this whole thing to the middle right there. So just with one, one key, my animation now is starting from the middle, right? I can move this thing after the fact, which is basically the, the hitbox, but my animation is now doing its, its thing, right? So now that I have it starting correctly and moving correctly, right? I can go ahead and like merge my layers because this is mocap, so it's one key every single frame, so it doesn't really matter, I'm just cleaning things up. And I can go ahead and grab my wrists again and you can actually make select sets to make uh, your selection a little bit easier if you're going to be doing this kind of stuff all the time go back to your parent space and then go back to main and then switch so now it's back to when I select the hips to regular mode right so but I still have my animation you saw how fast it is to do these things with red 9 another thing that I do very often 
is go to my graph editor right here and then you see here like you know this data is all right but let me just see like here for example sometimes you get spikes you get like noise in your mocap right so this is where your your curve filter butterworth filter comes really handy so this is basically a cleanup graph or uh, a, a way to actually kind of like filter your curves to actually get smoother motion or more heightened motion like a bigger motion right i don't know if that makes sense but i hope so but um so what you can do basically is make live because you can see these things changing live right so make live and i advise you guys before you do anything you can actually buffer a snapshot right there and that basically like if you change your curves you can see your your snapshot what it was before you can always go back to what it was before just in case you don't like the results and then here you can actually go sample to frame means that it snaps to a specific frame and then you can just like change how your curves look right there see so you had this before right so you can make them smoother like this as you are moving them along so this basically takes off any like like some jitters some shakes that sometimes you get in mocap you use something like this and all of a sudden all those jitters that were happening as you're moving the hand now is actually smooth motion really cool use with caution uh, little goes a long way with this tool but definitely definitely really really cool if you don't like it at any point you can just go ahead and actually snap uh, to buffer right or swap buffer i should say you can always get what you had before just in case you mess up the mocap data cool so i think we have a few more tools to go threadmill amongst them that we need to follow through and we need to actually do more videos about it and i think most of these tools are so specific and are so powerful that almost required a video by itself for you guys to understand exactly how at least i use them but red nine for sure just know that red nine for sure is like really powerful set of tools for you to actually edit animation data this data can be mocap can be a uh, hand key but you know because mocap is so uh data uh dense you just have so much to deal with having a tool like this that simplifies your curves simplifies your keys allows you to manipulate the keys manipulate your data becomes super useful and friendly for you as an animator to become faster but also more professional and get results that are actually all the time the same now with all that being said this video is becoming incredibly long and i hope you guys are still with me so if all of this makes sense to you all of this looks like super juicy and super useful to you then give red nine a try 30 day free trial once again this video is not sponsored in any ways they are just great people and I think that more people deserve to actually use this tool because I feel like it's incredibly useful for so many, many, many reasons, right? If this video was useful to you in any ways, then comment down below for sure. Let me know what you think about Red9. Let me know how good you think they're going to be, how useful it's going to be to you. And if you use them, definitely comment down below and let me know what is your favorite tool so other people can go ahead and actually kind of like observe and take in that knowledge that you already have from these tools. Now, I hope you guys have a great rest of the week. Shout out to my Patreons for supporting me every single month. And as always, stay well, stay safe. Peace.